Finally, we get to uh, using actual numbers in our equilibrium expression. So let's try taking a particular equilibrium reaction. Notice that the K value is given. You could also look up the K value in a particular resource at a particular temperature. But here the K value is given to us. So assume you start with 8 molar water and 6 molar CO. Notice that all of the uh, molecules in the reaction are gases, so that means we're going to include all of them in the equilibrium expression. Now, <clears throat> here we learn about probably the most important concept involving equilibrium, and that is the ICE table. ICE stands for initial uh, concentration, change in concentration, and then equilibrium concentration. This ice table gives us a way of organizing the information in an equilibrium problem. Now, in the problem above, it says assume you start with. So that implies your 8 molar water and your 6 molar CO are both initial concentrations. Because no information is given about the H2 um, concentration or the CO2, we are to presume there is none of either of one of those to start with, so the initial concentrations of both of those would be zeros. And then we're going to determine the change um, and then hopefully calculate the equilibrium concentration. Learn this ice table, use it every time you do an equilibrium problem. You're going to definitely use it for this chapter and then for the next two. So for the next three chapters, we'll be using these ice tables in some fashion. So here's our balanced equation. Step one again is always to write the law of mass action, which is the equilibrium expression. And that equilibrium expression is going to look like this. Now, we've already substituted the, t, the 2 in for where the K is supposed to be. Notice that all of the concentrations are um, raised to the power of their coefficients. All the coefficients in this particular equation happen to be 1. So that makes the uh, K expression rather simple. Step 2, we ice the problem, beginning with the initial concentration. So the initial concentration of water given in the problem was 8. The initial concentration of CO given in the problem was 6. And then again, we assumed no H2 or CO2 was present. Now the change. The change is going to be a variable and that variable is going to reflect where the substances are located and also the coefficients. So typically the reactants here, because there's none of the products, the reactants when this reaction goes, they're going to decrease by some unknown amount. And since they're one to one in the balanced equation, they're both going to decrease by the same unknown, unknown amount. Because the H2 and the CO2 are products and you start with none of it to begin with, you're actually going to produce both of those. And because those are also one-to-one -one with the CO and the water, each of those will increase by the same unknown x value. So our change for water is minus x, for CO is minus x, for H2 it's going to go up by x, and for CO2 it's going to be uh, an increase of plus x. Now if there were coefficients in there in that balanced equation those would be reflected in the change. So for example if we had an H2 and uh, a 2 in front of H2 then the increase uh, the change there would be a plus 2x. So it's all the changes are all proportionally stoichiometrically. Now the equilibrium concentration then is simply a sum of those two. So for the water it's going to be 8 minus x for CO6 minus X, and then for H2 and CO2, because we've started with nothing and then there's been a positive X change, you simply end up with X concentrations at equilibrium. Now, we know the K value, so we can actually plug in products over reactants. So our H2 is X, our CO2 is X, our water on the bottom there is 8 minus X, and then our CO is 6 minus X. You would then at this point solve for X. So you would possibly plug this into the quadratic formula because you have X squared on the top and then you'll have a second degree polynomial there on the bottom. So one possible way to solve this is to use the 
quadratic formula. This is fairly simple though, so you could probably not use the quadratic and come up with the uh, x value. However, we will do more complicated problems where using the quadratic uh, formula might be helpful. The value then for x ends up being 4 when you solve for x in this equation. And keep in mind again that the 2 there is the k that was given. Now, the original question was to get equilibrium concentrations. We just have the x. So now we need to go back into the box at the top there that says equilibrium and actually plug in our value of 4. When we do that, we end up with a concentration for water of 4, because we plug the 4 in for x. Concentration of CO ends up being 2 and then H2 and CO2 both end up being 4. And the units on all those concentrations then of course would be molarity. Now again, this was a very simple example. So just know that the math may not always be as pretty as the math in this problem.